In previous videos, we have looked at the CN statement and we've used it to read in data where each data item has been separated by one or more spaces. What happens if you have data input that looks something like that? Where everything is jammed together and there are no spaces in between. This represents several items. Now, let's look at this. You can tell that's a year and a month and a day and then some other stuff over here. And we have dots between the date part, the year, the month, and the day. How can you write a program that would use CN to read in this kind of information? How can you? Well, that's what this video is all about. It will show how to read in data that looks like that. Here's the program that we'll start with. And it's a partial program, as uh, I typically use in the videos. And you can tell I've got a lot of variables declared here. And that's the key in uh, making, uh, setting up a program that can read in data like that. CN is going to depend on the types that these data items have in order to read them in. Now let's look at those types. We have year, month, and day. Those are unsigned integers. They are separated by dots, which are characters. But the year, the month, and the day, those are going to be ordinary unsigned integers. Then afterwards, we've got a single letter, which is the product ID. I'm calling that uh, a character type. Then the next thing, L, that's a location, factory location. That's an unsigned integer. Then the other stuff is all characters. So the X, the D, the C at the end, those are single letter characters. I've also declared a character for dot because I need to read in the dot, as you can see here, separating the year, the month, and the day. All right, so now let's go ahead and write the program and we'll see how we can read this data in with CN. So I can do CN and then I just need to list all of the items. So they do have to be in the correct order, right? So the year, the month, and the day separated by dots. So we'll do the year. And then in order to read the dot, I have to actually use that variable dot that I've declared here. All right, so we'll read the dot next. And then the next thing that's going to be up is the month, mm. So that's the variable month. Well, don't type it there. Okay, type it down here. Okay, month. Then there's another dot. Okay, I erased it, but there's another dot right there. So we need to read in the other dot that follows the uh, day. So I'll read in the variable dot, that character. And then after that, we've got the day. And we just keep going. We keep reading things in. So the uh, enter the product code, the year, and the day, and let's somehow I lost the month as well. So let's put that back in there and let's take the dot out here because it doesn't belong. And now that matches up. So I've used CN and CN reads in the year, as you can see here. That takes care of all of those four digits. And the way CN works is it will continue to read in everything that's an unsigned integer until it finds something that isn't. So a dot is not an unsigned integer. So CN stops with, let's go move that back. CN stops when it reads the year because it has in, encountered this dot and that's not an unsigned integer. So that's how you can use CN in order to read in compressed data. You just have to make sure that you have variables that correspond to the different types of information as you go left to right. Now, when we read in dot, CN sees the next character. That's a dot that qualifies as a type character, so it reads it in and it saves it in the variable dot. Then it's positioned right before the month. We have the variable month here. Month is an unsigned integer, so it can read in the one or two digits for the month. But then it encounters another dot that is not an unsigned integer, so CN stops at that point. Now we need another variable to read in the dot, and I can just use this uh, character variable dot to read the second dot in. And that reads it, and then we move on to the day, which is an unsigned integer. Then the next thing after that, here's a character type for P. So once again, DD, those are unsigned integers. CN can read them, 
but when it comes across this variable p, then variable p, or the, the product ID, which is uh, the code p, that's a character. Okay, a character is not an unsigned integer, so cn is going to stop reading in the day, and it will look to read in a variable of type character to get this thing. So, we now just need to have variables that correspond to those types. So the next thing we have, there's the product ID. So the product ID. Okay, so product ID. Okay, and then we continue to read in uh, everything else. So after the product ID, then we've got an unsigned integer. It's called a factory location. So we can read that next. So we've got the factory location. And this line's getting long, so I'm going to just hit enter and we'll come back over here and continue. There's, there's no semicolon over there. All right, so the factory location. Now we have three other codes, the X, D, C, so quality flag and inspector and package type comes next. And so call the flag and inspector is uh, next. And the last thing is the package type. And that's it. So CN, written like this, will read in all of that information. And remember, the key thing is it is the type that matters. So CN is going to read in an unsigned integer until it finds something that isn't. Then it reads in that dot. Then it reads in the month next is an unsigned integer. Then that's terminated when it hits the dot, so we have to read that in. So as long as you have your variables declared and you read them in in the proper order, then it doesn't matter if there are no spaces in your input data. That's easy enough. So CN, once again, very powerful, very flexible, and it will read in the data just like that. And in order to see what we've read in, this, uh, we need to go ahead and print everything back out again. So let's go and do that. We'll do a C out, and uh, I'll just say that the product code contains product code contains and semicolon with an end line. And then we'll just print everything out. In our output this time, it's really not important that we do a um, set uh, fixed or a, a scientific or anything like that because none of this data is a float or a double. So the set precision and, and the uh, set fixed, those just pertain to floats and doubles, so we don't need to do that here. But I do want to use one of the uh, manipulators, and I want to lift justify things, as you'll see coming up. So I will go ahead and set the manipulator left, and then I just want to print out some stuff. Okay, so let's do a date first. Okay, we'll do a date, semicolon, and let's print that out just all in the same line. All right, so the input was year, month, and day, but normally we do month, day, and year. Okay, so let's print out the month first, okay, month. And then you can separate this with spaces if you want to. You can put a dot back in there, uh, whatever separator you want. Go ahead and use dot this time, since it's something we have already. So I have the month and a dot, and then the day, and then another dot, and then the year at the end. Okay, so we'll put that over there. And then we'll put an end line. Now, let's move on and print out the other stuff. These will all be on the same uh, one per line, that is. So we'll print the rest of the stuff out one per line. And we'll do one big C out statement. Okay, we'll do a C out. I'm going to do a set width to 15 to line things up. And I want to print out the name of the thing, which is going to be the product ID first with a colon. And we'll tab over that, and we'll print out the actual variable. Okay, product ID. And an end line, but no semicolon. Don't put a semicolon over there. 
because I'm going to copy that much of it and I'll paste it in here and I'll just do a bit of editing but notice there's there's no semicolon at the end so now I just need to do a little editing product ID and uh, the next thing is the location code and that's the uh, factory location and then the rest of these things so I'm just going to quickly pause and I'll paste in the others so you don't have to waste time watching me type okay so I've uh, completed all of the output so let's look at that one more time there's a C out statement I've got a field width of 15 that will print out these uh, string constants it'll be left justified and I have set the field width of 2 to print out these other things and uh, that's just to give them a little bit more space they're all one character so that just means that there's going to be a space to the left of each one of these guys all right um, actually to the right of each one of these guys so that uh, now is all one big C out statement you'll notice there's no um, semicolons here but there is one at the very end so this one all those uh, lines are one big C out statement all right now let's uh, compile the program and run it so the program is running let's type in some information that uh, corresponds to that format so let's do 2019 and a dot the month let's make it 06 for June a dot pick a date like 15 then we need to follow it with uh, some characters there so let's see what do those guys look like again let's uh, bring our code back so we can see what they are all right so the the first thing is this product ID that's a character so let's just give that a value for call it R uh, the next thing is an unsigned integer for the factory location so we need an integer let's make an 8 and then we've got three characters quality flag let's put a G for good uh, the inspector let's make inspector Y and the package type let's make it L so now all that data corresponds to that uh, format then all we need to do is uh, we can just hit the uh, hit the enter key and then the uh, output that we wrote comes back and is output to the screen so here is where I, uh, I typed in the data and then our output statements show the date and each of those items the ID the code and so on so this program then shows you that you can type in this kind of data I mean you can read the data with CN just as I've shown you here all right now that means that the control of the CN statement is dependent on the types so if you're very careful with the types and you follow clearly and precisely the data from left to right then you can write a CN statement very simply like this and it will read in the compressed data so that's the way you do it all right now uh, let's go back to the output and there's one more thing I want to show you before we terminate this video so hang on alrighty so I have uh, run the program again and we are prompted to type in the data as we were before but now let's disobey the rules okay so let's uh, let's type in the year 2019 and let's put some space there and I know the CN statement is going to be looking for a dot so I'll type a dot and then some more spaces and I can type in the month like 06 and then some more space a dot and I could type in the day like 15 then I'll hit enter now I've gone to another line and so now I'm over here and I need to type in something for the P so we used an R for that I think and then some more space 8 was the factory location then I'm going to hit enter I'll hit enter again and the last things where we had the quality flag that was a G the D is the inspector flag it's a Y and uh, then the last thing is the package type which was an L right. so this data now that I'm entering is spread out across four lines you can see that and my question is will CN read this correctly and output it will it understand it so I'll hit enter and we'll find out and here is the result so you can see 
the date comes out okay. And the other stuff does too. Okay, so there's the R, the location's eight, the quality flag inspector. So even though I typed in the data across several lines and with spaces in between, you know, except for these last three, CN still read that data correctly. How was it able to do that? What's going on here? Well, in the next video, we'll take a look at that. So we'll stop here and uh, terminate the video at this point.